Hello, accountability buddies. This is Les with another episode of Less is More Healthy. And in this episode, I am doing a brief review. Well, actually, it's not a brief review. I don't know why I said that. Almost 25 minute review of the uh, Independence Greenway rail trail that uh, starts in Peabody, Massachusetts and runs out to Middleton, Massachusetts. Um, so here I'm showing a section of the trail that's not connected yet. Now, Peabody has plans to connect the two halves of the trail um, at the trailhead for the at, at the end of the Peabody section of the Danvers Rail Trail. So that rail trail will connect. There'll be two connecting portions that go kind of more directly to the rail trail so that you don't have to ride along Lowell Street, which is the street that I'm on, there is that very busy intersection that is a series of cloverleafs and whatnot for uh, Interstate 95. I think that there's a connector for Route 1 and 128 on there. It's hugely busy, pretty dangerous. Um, and so Lowell Street is coming out here. Uh, I don't remember what the name of this street is that I'm getting to. I'm looking at my map here because I couldn't hear Kamut um, in my bag. So up here, I'm going to take a left onto a much more residential street. Here we go across the street. Um, and, uh, yeah, so this section is more residential. It's pretty quiet. Uh, it is pretty rough. The sidewalks are very wide and pretty smooth. I think they made them very wide because a lot of people ride their bikes on them to get to the trail. Uh, so, here I'm just riding my bike on the sidewalk which is rough right there and so one of the trailheads is at a park called Lieutenant Ross Park which is down on this left hand turn here looks like I'm pretty close to that car but I'm well on my side um, all right so here's the trailhead there's a little park here it's very busy there is, which you'll see in a moment, a cooler with free drinks, which they do ask you to leave a tip. I grabbed a Gatorade and a tiny bottle and left a couple bucks. Um, so let's talk about the Independence Greenway. It is uh, wide enough for two bikes, three bikes to pass pretty easily on either side of the rail trail. The trail is completely paved, which a lot, most of the other trails in the area are hard packed gravel, um, at least in the North Shore. And this, so this one's completely paved um, and it does have dotted yellow lines in the middle, which I found seem to really help most people stay on their side of travel. So... Uh, bikes were pretty good at staying on the right hand side. People were pretty good at staying on their right hand side and in their actual like direction of movement, uh, which in the area goes uh, on the right hand side of the road. So here um, I am passing over uh, or through a swamp and I do stop. And on the right hand side, all of the lily pads are in blossom and it, I did not show it well. I do, um, I did take some pictures. Uh, I don't think they really came out on my phone. Uh, so I'm not including them here, but I did take a little video. Sorry for the shaky cam, but, uh, it was cool. It was, I've never seen that many lily pads in Blossom. Are, are they Lotus? I'm not sure exactly what they are out here. Um, but they're white and pink and it was gorgeous and really cool to see. Um, so that's on that right hand side as I head up towards Middleton. Um, quite an impressive track of blossoming lily pads. So super cool. Um, yeah, so there are wooden guardrails on any of the sections that you could, you know, fall into water or where it's super swampy. Um, yeah, most of it is pretty well shaded. There are some sections that are really bright and sunny. You can see I had a relatively overcast day. Um, 
there are a bunch of places that like this coming up where there are just benches to sit in this case there are a couple of adirondack chairs um where people fish this is crystal lake um a lot of people are in here fishing uh families hanging out a lot of goose or geese a lot of geese and geese droppings a lot of a lot of goose poop um in this area but that was this was a super cool spot to just kind of like sit for a few minutes i recorded my last episode here so that was neat um up over the hill here there are a couple of other seating spots and it's like that all along this trail there are benches pretty much everywhere which i find really nice um a lot of rail trails don't have seating along it and i think for older people or people who have some mobility limitations having a spot where they can sit for a few minutes um and just rest is really nice i really appreciate that i mean I don't necessarily have a lot of uh, need for them, but when they're there and I'm taking a break on my bike, I, I definitely utilize those benches. It's really nice. Um, so you can see in this section, there are a lot of cracks and um, orange spray paint indicating that it's rough. And those are roots and frost heaves. So uh, and I think that might be part of the reason that uh, the trail many of the other trails in the area aren't paved because uh frost heaves and roots so this is a pretty wet section um of the rail trail you'll notice there's this one dude that wandered into the wrong lane of traffic um is the one person that just stopped dead um so yeah so some wet here this is a particularly wet swamp area we have had a ton of rain recently um and again, there's high tension power lines um, running along here. And I think that's for a lot of the rail trail system in Massachusetts. I know that a lot of the railways also had power lines running along them. So this is a pretty well utilized trail. There are lots of people on it. So if you do decide to come out and do it, um, be aware that there are going to be a lot of people and there are some pr rough sections which are doable on any type of bike um i think that's a positive about this trail is that you can pretty much do it on a, on a road bike you could do it on a mountain bike um, i'm doing it on my 95 kona with one and a half inch no one and three quarter inch tires no one and a half definitely one and a half inch tires uh, so one and a half inch tires on it that are semi slicks. Um, and, uh, the ride was really comfortable for me. I don't know if I'd want to do this on full on knobbies, but I had a good time on my bike. So again, lots of tree shade. Um, another thing that I noticed is there are lots of dog bowls um, all along the trail. It didn't look like they'd been clean. There were a lot of a lot of bugs in them. So I don't know how, how many people are actually uh, maintaining those. So I stopped here um, and the video is not great. But uh, I saw a turkey vulture overhead and the scene was really, really cool. Couldn't capture it well on camera, but... Um, definitely a super scenic spot the whole trail is pretty scenic even though i know that on a lot of this trail there are businesses on one side uh, apartment buildings on one side there's definitely a lot of swamp especially on this right hand side here um you know it was pretty quiet and there is some section that is still farmland there's some areas where you could definitely smell uh, cow poo well, this is the first time on the whole trail where I've, you know had to kind of slow down or stop because people were in the way on both sides that happens way more often on the danvers section of the trail so this is part of the border to boston trail system and the hope is that eventually they will all, all three sections of the trail will get connected. So this is the uh, terminus in 
Middleton for the trail. Um, so that's where it ends. And there is a parking lot here where you can bring in cars and park it. And um, so <laughs> Kamut said that the whole trail was single track. So I wasn't sure what I was going to say about this. This is not part of the rail trail. This is a separate hiking trail or single track mountain biking trail that I decided I wanted to try. And uh, it was not great on slick tires on my particular bike. On a real mountain bike with at least front suspension, this would be a lot of fun. Hiking, this would have been fantastic, although quite quite muddy. Um, so this section of Woodlot is part of some sort of green space in Middleton. Um, I'm switching over to clear protective glasses instead of sunglasses because it's it's a little darker in here as you can probably tell uh here i had a pedal strike and had to get off my bike and so i'm pedaling this is quite nice actually for for most of this but it's also pretty rough um there's also quite a bit of trash stashed here uh also another pedal strike uh, i'm trying to make my way over it and back through the woods and right here, that, I uh, lost the back end of my bike. It slipped out from underneath me uh, because that was actually a mud pit. Not my favorite. I thought it was kind of more hard packed trail. Not cool. So I walked a little bit to get out of there and kept pedaling. So this is, I was seriously having some, uh, what was I thinking kind of thoughts about this. And yeah, so this would have been a lot of fun on a mountain bike. Um, not so much fun on my bike. So here I'm trying to figure out, am I, am I supposed to go right? Am I supposed to go straight? And according to Kmoot, straight. And a lot of this is pretty nice. I'm pretty sure a lot of this is, um, you can see there's a lot of trash dumped throughout here. Uh, I think people use ATVs in here and dirt bikes. So, which is why the trail is in the condition it's in. And so that's the end. So I do ride from here instead of going back through the woods because it would have been all uphill. I ride back to the uh, rail trail. I'm not including that footage because you don't need to see it both ways. Because, um, well, you could. I will use that footage in other videos. So I am riding from uh, Ross Park uh, back to the head of the second half of this rail trail. It's not really half. I think it's more like a third of it. And it's largely unfinished. So from here, I'm getting back onto Lowell Street and uh, it's a little more busy. I'm checking out because Kamut kept saying you're, you're going in the wrong direction. You're going in the wrong direction. And eventually Kamut does catch up and figure out I'm in the right spot uh, and where I'm supposed to be. So just sort of, you know, riding along in this residential section. There's plenty of space here. I know it doesn't necessarily look like the shoulders are wide, but the shoulders are very wide. Um, sidewalk is less wide on this side. For some reason, Peabody did uh, really wide shoulders on one side of their roads, but not on the other side of their roads. I'm wondering if there's a school in one direction. So here at this intersection, I'm back on the sidewalk. Um, it just felt a little safer. I think I'm back on Lowell Street now. So it gets pretty busy here. Lowell Street is a major strode headed towards a connector for Interstate 95 and 128, I think also Route 1. So it's just, it's super busy here. And yeah, there's a sign for Route 1 Boston coming up. Uh, this was not my favorite experience of the ride. The ride out from Lowell Street was not bad because there was a super wide sidewalk on the other side. Um, particularly in this intersection. So I have to merge with traffic here at this light, which is not so bad because um, everyone's going straight here and they're not making a turn. If they were going to make a turn, they'd already made it. 
Um, so here we go. Um, that was a little harrowing. There's a turn on. This underpass was stupid scary. This intersection, stupid scary. Did not, this was, this is why the connectors for the rail trails are going to be so important. Um, again, this intersection, stupid scary. This underpass, stupid scary. Um, and then you pull off here and the, the trail is right there. So to get to the trail, this roadway, I believe is actually considered part of it. So this seems like it's like a not very well maintained roadway or something that's not used anymore. Um, and it does head through a cemetery. This is a Jewish cemetery. And it does seem like a lot of kids cut through here. I saw quite a few kids um, in this section where I was checking out my maps up ahead uh, in, in previously. I did cut that out. Um, saw a lot of kids on wheelie bikes coming through here. So it's quite an extensive cemetery. You can see that the wind is pretty rough. So here I had to stop and look at my map again. I couldn't figure out if I was supposed to go right right there or straight. And it's definitely supposed to go straight. Check and see if my light's still on. So overall, I, I liked this trail. I really prefer gravel. Um, and the trailhead is right up here on the left. So there it is. There you go. So I definitely prefer gravel on my rail trails. Um, I, I just like the surface better. It's a little more forgiving um, on my body. The Tar isn't bad. Uh, I find that the, you know, frost heaves and whatnot are much rougher than, than any sections of the graveled rail trails I've ridden. But it does make for a pretty fast surface. So you can pick up some speed. This section of the trail was much quieter, way fewer people until towards the end of this trail. Um, and the trail goes the whole way to the North Shore Mall. At the very end, I nope out because I'm like, I did not want to cross this super busy intersection at Su Chang's, which is, I think, an out of business Chinese restaurant. It used to be one of the everyone's favorite Chinese restaurant in the area. Um, it was okay. They had really great garlic green beans. Uh, but anyway, the, the trail is super nice. Uh, it's easily rideable. You can, you, you know, Go the whole way to the North Shore Mall if you really want to um, from Middleton pretty quietly, pretty quickly. Um, you know, there is that section on Wool Street, which is basically hell to ride. That was not a lot of fun when they do finish the con two connecting um, trails next year. Uh, I would be much more likely to ride these different sections again. I don't know that I would ever ride out to Middleton again until the connectors are completed. Um, riding on Lowell Street was just super, super scary, especially on the way back. Um, I did not like riding on Lowell Street. It was, it was scary. But um, if I, if I drove out to Middleton, parked at the Middleton lot, and then rode to 
uh, Ross Park, or I could go to Ross Park right out um, to Middleton and back. That would be fine. It's usually I try not to to ride my car out and park somewhere and then ride back. Um, anyway, overall, I think this is is a great rail trail. It's pretty well maintained. Lots of trash barrels all along it. Lots, lots of benches to rest. Um, dog waste bags all over the place. Um, unfortunately, there aren't any water stations. So um, I found that interesting. The only water stations are on the other section of trail. So like I said, pretty good rail trail. Worth worth the visit. Um, if you're trying to ride all the wet rail trails in the area like I am, worth a visit. So that's my that's my ride. I know this was a particularly long video. Thank you for checking it out. Thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. Um, if you are considering riding this trail or if you've ridden it before, leave a comment. Tell me how you, what you thought of it. If this is like your daily trail, let me know. Uh, what do you like? What don't you like about it? What would you like to see change? Um, are you excited about the two connecting trails they're planning on putting in? for uh, to connect these two sections of independence greenway trail with the other section of rail trail um, i'm stoked about that because that will make this a much more rideable trail for me um, anyway like share subscribe share this with uh, someone on your social media and uh, i really appreciate you being here thanks and bye